What is going on guys? Samuel One World from Samuel One World Productions here back with another uh, tier list for you all today. And that's pretty list that I want to do for quite a while and that is to rank every big brother winner from what's the best. Yes, this is the tier I'm gonna rank every person that won Big Brother. Every you know, all from the US seasons from the one over time season to the Slugbirds, even the Canada seasons, and a total of 37 winners that I will be ranking here. Now, the question is, how am I going to assess ranking a winner? Because there are a lot of different areas how some people would assess ranking a winner from a reality show. There's a lot of different ways, like a lot of people rank that on personality, or likability, or dominance, or dominance especially right here is the more often it comes to a ranking, on how much it dominated and how they played throughout this season. I mean, I'm just I'm just going off with how I feel the winners based on just how much I enjoyed them, how much I enjoyed them throughout the season of the show, how what great moments they have throughout the season, how much I enjoyed their presence throughout the season. Season overall, did I felt very satisfied when they actually won the season? And Big Brother definitely has a very up and down history when it comes to winners. That some are great and some are not so great. Which is why I did a lot of tiers like that. Of course, the high gold winner tier, which is based the top tier winners. The amazing winner, which is um, obviously amazing, just not there, great, good, some of these, and you know the drills points. Train wreck. And also clarify, almost two things. First off, again, this is just my personal opinion how I feel about these winners, then I am going to be ranking these winners pretty much based on how I feel they played on their season, not them as overall players. I think that's kind of a ranking different list without to rank them overall as players. So this is a case where I'm just ranking them based on how they played on their individual season. Just figured I'd give you all a little clarification there. But anyways, let's get on to the list. Again, I got 37 winners to rank anyway, so let's get it on! <laughs> As always, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. So let's get to it. First up, we have Eddie from Big Brother 1. What is there to really say about Eddie? I know he's the first that won it, but I bet you nobody emails season 1 of Big Brother. So, like, he's not the one of which one is, but he's not exactly good either, just not memorable. So, he's going in the bad one category. Sorry. Then we now we go from one of the worst winners to one of the best winners in Dr. World Kirby. Again, I mean, there's a reason why Dr. World Kirby is one of the best winners in reality history. Well, I would say this game is as perfect as some people make it out to be. He definitely is a mastermind for a goddamn freaking reason, and he was incredible to watch for that season. Seeing his moves so great laid out, seeing him like really manipulate everybody, and seeing him just play the game without even winning any competition. Like, so for a winner we're getting to win on down the road later on the list, he was the only winner that won without winning any competitions. And he still hasn't, even from his prison authorized. So even when just dressing his Big Brother 2 game, I'm still going to put it... Uh, I... Oops. I'm sorry, guys. I'm still going to put it in the high goal tier. Again, I don't say this game is like perfect or anything, but... I think the presence that he has had on Big Brother is honestly undeniable. Plus, he's just so fun to watch. <laughs> then we have Lisa from Big Brother 3. But we def definitely one of the more under the radar winners of the show. Honestly, and. And kind of, and of course, there's a lot of people that Daniel should have won that season, and they think they, that she they didn't win because, you know, they saw the professionals at home and they were upset at her about everything she said. But I still like Lisa, honestly. I don't think she's one of the most memorable winners out there, but I still really enjoy her, so I'm going to put her in the good win category. Again, sorry, I don't really have much to say about her. Then we have June, who is one of the. I also think it's kind of underrated, honestly. Again, either I don't think the season of stuff is great, honestly. It's probably the most forgettable season to show behind Big Brother 1. June is something I've always really enjoyed on this season. She, I don't think her games are kind of underrated, if I'm being honest. Um, I know a lot of people think she's that as well, and I'm definitely one of those people. Whether she's just fun and likable, has a great moment, playing a really solid game throughout, just... June's just likable, so I'm putting her in the great category. Then we have Drew Daniel from Big Brother 5. For 5. Well, definitely one of the more one of the most likable winners to have ever appeared on Big Brother. 
I would say he has the best personality in the world, which kind of like dumps it for Pencil for being up in the higher growth category. But I say his impressive game, I think he's probably the first person to actually win, win a core HOHs for men. Was he? Yeah, it was actually. He's definitely probably be the big dominant winner that pretty much most of these ones we're talking about are pretty much kind of known for. So we'll definitely get that later, but Drew was a likable winner, was a fun presence, not the best personality in the world, but I'm still putting him in the amazing in the amazing one category. Then we have Maggie, and oh boy, this is what people again. Like I mentioned before, when I did my Big Brother season ranking, I'm not really high on Big Brother Six, and seems some people are. Like I think it's a great season. Don't get me wrong. I think it's one of the friendship alliances that I've never really been like hugely high on. I think something kind of annoying, honestly. Unfortunately, the most annoying end up being the final two, in my opinion. I looking back, I never really cared for Maggie, if I'm being honest. And I don't really figure out what it was I kept by Manny, but just she's just not really not interesting for character. I mean she definitely has her moments, don't get me wrong. Like she definitely has a good moment throughout the season. I don't think she's like a bad one by any means. Um uh, means honestly. But she just, just doesn't one that just really pops, honestly. And that's all I can really say about Maggie, honestly. It's fortunate she was one that ended up winning. Winning I I get again, even when I watched the season for the first time. Honestly, while looking at the paper, I never really was interested here for Maggie, honestly. And I think that's the kind of reason why I'm not like high on paper six, like it was actually in the grades here, and a lot of people say it would be amazing and one of the best seasons ever. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people, but I still do love this. I do think it's a great season, honestly, obviously. But uh, so I'm going to put Maggie in the mix category. Because I think there'll definitely have some good highs on her game and her good ca- highs on her game, but in terms of her personality and who I enjoyed for out. There's not much there. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> now we have Big Ruth, Devin winner, Mike Bergy. Again, it's definitely hard to judge this game now, considering all the stuff that he has gone through with, with life, because I don't want really to get into that, but there's a lot of personal stuff that happened recently that kind of sound Mike Bergy a bit, but one thing that into count. Mike Bergy is still one of my, being one of the best winners, and still one of my favorite players of all time, in my opinion. Man, I mean, cause he played an incredible, cause he did play an incredible game here. He did do a good job manipulating. He will do a good job manipulating everybody in the game to the final four, where I just realized, oh wait, we've been doing the whole time. Not much. Mike Bergy was just a fun presence throughout the season. Like he always was a fun presence in season two. Now he's an equally more fun presence here. I mean, he had a freaking win this season. So, yeah. Oops, sorry. Yeah, he's going in the high gold category. Chill town for a reason. <laughs> sorry, I, I had to. And then we have Evil Dick. Definitely one of the more divisive winners. One of them personality. Cause I'm, see, see why a lot of people be turned off by his like rudeness and his like behavior throughout the season. I, I've always loved Evil Dick, honestly, and I guess, I, I say what you will about how, how he is pretty much outside the game, and how he's pretty much been now. I know some people don't like how he's been acting recently. But in terms of it, I've always loved the guy. I always thought he was just entertaining throughout the beginning to end. Honestly, and well, there's definitely said that he probably could have won, probably never should win the season now for America's player. And that's why I really want to be being his name because he was probably more benefited by it. But even when taking that account, I still love Evil Dick. And he's, yeah, screw it. He's going, God, I got caught when I kind of go at. It's just a, just a person. All the best gameplay, it's just a personality alone, he's up there. Then we have Adam. <sighs> yep. Even when I'm watching this season when I said I never really care for Adam and I think it's honestly gotten worse for me again. Probably occurred to about that fact that he called autistic people retards. Yes, that actually happened. But can't you know, that he was just not fun to watch. Watch he was just kind of an ass for no reason at some points and sometimes he didn't really play the game very well and treat people kinda of terribly at times. He was not really that likable for he just was not really that likable. That's really all I can say, but he de- definitely, he's definitely, actually he's now my least favorite winner in the entirety of Big Brother, honestly. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I just like, 
Yeah, he's kind of the reason why I never really cared for BB9, and then why BB9 is not a season I'm like hugely high on, even though in some ways I should, but yeah. And I'm definitely in the trainer category. Thank you, Sink. Of course, Dan Gibson's going in the high group category. What I need to say about Dan Gibson that hasn't already been said, like, you guys still know for being the best player in BB history? And we got them good reason. He put, he put, you know, like he played one of the best games in BB history. Even when he was like down in the bottom, he was there to you know, figure out a way to get back up. He was there to figure out a way to kick everything through, and he somehow manages to basically, basically play a perfect game, and he played an incredible, perfect, and wonderful game, and that's the reason why, even from this season alone, he considered to be one of the best players of all time. Like, honestly, B14 kind of solidified that, but just for this season alone, he definitely belonged in this high school winner, and he was definitely a satisfying winner. I mean, he won unanimously, so. But yeah, I've, I think he's like, what did he say? Then we have Jordan Lloyd. I definitely debate how I actually feel about Jordan throughout this season, honestly, but I, I've always liked Jordan, honestly. I've, I always thought Jordan was a likable winner. Like, she's definitely one of the more likable winners of Big Brother. Her game can kind of a little place at times, not gonna lie, and she's definitely not someone that a lot of people expected to win at some point. But, you know, Jordan definitely deserved to win. She definitely was a worthy winner for the season. She definitely played a solid game, but definitely had a rough moment and the rep patches and all that stuff, but I still like Jordan, so she's going in the great category. Hayden Moss, the brigade member that won BB12. And he's going in the high goal winner category. Definitely a dominant winner, but not like Drew, he actually has more of a likable person, more of a pop up personality that makes you really like and root for him. A lot of times throughout the season, he's just a great likable presence throughout. He definitely deserved his win. And unfortunately, we weren't able to see him blend again in a bit, but also, because originally I think he was supposed to be on that season, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah. Oh boy, Rachel Riley. Honestly, of all the reality TV stars, Rachel's someone I'm always so up and down about. Like, in some ways, like, I'm always so up and down. Like, I think the lot of right? Like, oh my god, Rachel's so entertaining. She's so fun. She's so great. And rather, there are times that I really frustrate and annoy the crap out of her. Like, she's the reason, like, like, just, like, for sure, she's the reason why Maze Race 20 is one of my least favorite seasons of the show. And I love that I've kind of grown to my kind of going a little bit to her time on BB12, especially that her fire with Kristen and her, some fun moments she has here and there, and she definitely had some memorable moments. Some can be for the wrong reasons, but like, her personality is one of those personalities that can really kind of rub in the wrong way at times. At times, and her brightness and her crying and her whininess can be so fucking irritating. At times, again, like, sometimes she, well, I don't mind her. Like, honestly, I didn't really mind her in the recent season of the traders, actually. Honestly, so, and I didn't even mind her on her second time on Amazing Race. But, well, but what actually about her in her season on BB24? Well, my friends, I am going to parade you, Riley, in. Think her category. Yeah, yeah, I think she actually played a good game. Again, some it might come kind of benefit by production because in that final six twist that happened that kind of catapulted her a little bit to be a winner, but she was definitely one of the, more, the first of the most surprising winners because I'm pretty sure nobody expected Rachel to actually win, but I don't know, I give credit for that too. some moments where she actually played very well and she definitely was a, lot, a little more fun here. Again, she definitely has her irritated moments, especially in the free dry phase, but I think after that, she's kind of a lot more watchable here. On this season, so I didn't have to what goes in the good here. Like I said, very up and down how I feel about Rachel. Then we have Ian Terry, the person that then you sing lost to in BB14. And I've always liked Ian, you know, honestly, and I think I might kind of like him when he first saw BB14, but I think the more I think about the season, the more he has grown on me. 
and could be also he's autistic as well. But I've always liked Ian. He was definitely a likable presence. A fun on the dark throughout the season. He really suddenly just dominated the entire season out of nowhere. But I like him, so I'm actually pairing him in the amazing category. Definitely a likable on the dog that Riffin deserved this win. You know, obviously Dan should have won, but you know, I'm not complaining about Ian win either. Then we have Andy. Andy is a very interesting case here. Because it's kind of a double because honestly, when you look back at Andy's game, when you look back at how he played, Andy's actually one of the best people to ever play Big Brother. He played one of the best winning games. But do you want to know the problem with that though? The problem is that his game wasn't really shown and he was ended very poorly throughout the season. Which is probably why people don't really consider Andy to be a top tier winner. Why people don't really even remember him all that much. And uh, he's kind of the reason why the season has is not my least favorite season anymore. Because I think it was for a while. But I think the more I think about Andy, the more like, oh yeah, he actually played a fantastic game. It just wasn't edited properly and wasn't really shown on the actual season. Yeah, but, but Andy's actually one of the most likable people to have ever been on the show. And it's unfortunate that has anyone gotten the way he did. So yes, he's going in the high goal winning category. Yes, I'm bringing him there, okay? And I'm also bringing Derek in there, because what is there to say about Derek that hasn't already been said? His BB-16 game is one of the best games ever on Big Brother, honestly. He played an incredibly dominant and willing game that... It's definitely up there with Danny He plays one of the best. He, from relationships to how you may play people, like, they definitely deserve this win, no doubt. Then we have Steve, definitely one of another very surprise, another string of very surprising winners. Because looking back, what do you think? When you watched this season, did you really think Steve was going to win this season? Did you think Steve was actually going to win Big Brother 17? I, mean, I thought he was going to be like, oh, boot, honestly. I don't know how, how he was there in the first few few weeks, but he ended up really surprising everybody, he ended up trying to grandma out Gabe, he ended up pulling girl agent chest everybody, he took out Vanessa the final three, which was um, very impressive, and he was a very likable person to watch throughout, so, I'm actually going to put him in the great category, I don't think his game is great enough to, great enough to up these two tiers, but I think Steve was definitely a very likable on the dark to win, and definitely a surprising one at that. Then we have Nicole Franzel. Now, if you, I'm, I'm gonna judge, now Nicole was definitely an interesting case. You know, I've always liked Nicole and Sling, and I think she was probably my first BB Slavic Fresh on 16. I mean, her gameplay wasn't the best, but it was still good. And I was definitely excited to see her back here, and I was actually shocked that she actually did end up winning this season. Especially being against Paul of all people, which we'll never get into because eventually I do plan on doing a tier left right right doing our ups. And BB22. Yeah, I'm also going to do a final Joe's ranking and I'll just say I'll leave how I feel on the call to when we get to that video at some point. Let's just leave it at that. So. I'm putting the call. In the amazing category, I think the game was honestly kind of underrated in that season. I think she actually played a really tested and really great social game that really will let her to make it as far as she had. And does some moves, especially in the first week and later weeks, was like, well, oh, definitely great. And it definitely has a downside, and I think she made a bit too personal moves, especially towards Michelle. But, uh, but honestly, Nicole definitely upped the game here, and I'm happy that she actually won again. Because her as a player, she honestly would be probably in the mix or bad win on scene. That's how bad that game was, and that's how bad and it's slightly cool, but that's a story but but, 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 That's a story for another day. Now we get to Josh. Josh, Josh, Josh. Yes, yes, yeah, Josh is going to bad with cat girl. Yes, I really wish I could like Josh, honestly, but I'm sorry, I mean, he's definitely not in the train wreck tier, which is where I originally had Josh, but he's definitely not up there, and I mean, Josh is a character that could have been fun and entertaining, but he's just not. He's just not that entertaining, and he's kind of annoying, kind of bratty, and just, just, just a character that just gets on your nerves. 
on Sammy. I mean, from what I've seen for season of the challenge, he's definitely much better there from what I've seen with just being on that. And we're going to see how he would do if, if he was Bridget going to be on All Stars. Who knows? He probably could have put me there, honestly. But it says right now, he's still in the bad win category. Dang, I'm definitely not actually my least favorite winner anymore, but, but he's definitely not still one of the worst. But now we get to Casey, the winner of BB20. Another surprising winner from a, a very dominant winner who's someone who basically ended up winning five, nearly five straight freaking vetoes. Five straight freaking vetoes. And I know Casey definitely is up and down how people feel about her, especially in terms of her personality, but. Honestly, I've always loved Casey. Honestly, I've always loved her, even before. T b b b b even after when, like, I've always liked Casey. I thought she was a great presence throughout her. Every time her personality and her energy was just immaculate to watch. It's been one I wanted her in the Golden Window or Amazing category, but I think I'm gonna stick with the Amazing category on this one. Not but quite yet, and like, uh, yeah, but. No, as right now, I think she's probably the one that's kind of close to these two tiers, but I think Amazing is probably perfect for, for Casey here. Then we have Jackson. <laughs> yes. Again, do we need to talk about Jackson, Jackson or Mickey as in Paul? Yeah, I never liked Jackson this season, and I never care. I mean, he's just one of the most unlikable. People to have ever peed on Big Brother from the being caused a major bullying that happened with Nicole from Pima String, his alliance terribly, it's such a show Holly, like there's some moments of like, Jesus, Holly's actually trying to talk to you and everything, yet you're drinking like shit and you're trying to make a feel like you're the bad guy here? Yeah, I don't like that, so I never like that stuff at all. I think literally the only reason, the only goddamn reason why he's actually not in the train next year. It's his impressive cop wins, and his amazing move of the final five. Where he actually tricked and Colin Cliff into actually voting on Tom outside the best interest. Because he either could have voted on Holly, but... Yeah. But, but yeah, he's definitely not one of, one of the most, like, he's definitely not a good winner at all. Like, I mean... Especially about the controversies, I mean, controversies surrounding him, that, like, that should tell you something. Okay, well, now we get to Cody Caffiori, who actually finished second in BB16. <gasps> and actually made the All Stars and win. And well, and yes. And I kind of made four points. He said, he pretty much broke Big Brother, he pretty much broke the show. At that point, which made that season so goddamn disappointing and boring. And he definitely was the most predictable winner to appear on Big Brother. But I gotta give credit where credit is due. And I'm gonna put Cody in the I go win a category. Because he did play an impressively dominant game. Like, yeah, I mean, he is also the only person in this season to actually never receive any nominations. To never actually been dominated throughout the entire season. Like, that's freaking impressive. Freaking impressive. And imagine if they would get people to actually, you know, align with him and somebody thinking he was outside the best interest. Like, say what you will about him, you can't deny that he's a pretty impressive winner here. Despite the fact that the season itself was just where he, his kind of gameplay, him breaking, it was kind of one of the reasons why. So, yeah. Anyways, now we have Xavier, Xavier from the, the Cook Alliance member that won the season. And I'm putting, putting him in the great category. Again, a very likable, fun winner. Not very much to say there. Definitely not my perfect to win at the Cook Alliance, but I'm happy. But he's definitely a very satisfying winner, despite some questionable moves here and there. And now we get to the last recent winner, Taylor. And I'm going to get that away. Of all the winners on this list, of every winner on this list, Taylor is the winner 
that I am was the most satisfied and the most happy to see win. And then that's of course because of how she was treated early on, like how she was hand boy handled, how people like crapped upon her, like her being probably one of the nicest people you ever meet in your life. And people and the reason why people kept a ring for Taylor since the very beginning and I feel that she definitely doesn't play the best game in the world, obviously, and she only won like two competitions throughout the season. She, she played more, she didn't prove that, that, hey, maybe I don't have to be dominant to actually win Big Brother. I can actually play in the Brother Soldier game and I could actually win. Uh, let's hope this is actually the standard for the show going forward. I hope this is the standard for the show going forward. So I fucking love Taylor, and... Yeah, screw it. She's going. She is going in the go I go win a category. Yes, I am putting them there. And that's it for the 24 US winners. Now we get to the slippery bird. I might go to this kind of pretty quick. We have Marissa. Pretty great winner. Never not what I expected, but definitely happens she won anyway. Tamar. The first one going in this all decent category. Not that, yeah, not very unexpected winner, but not one like super hyped about either. Not much to say about there. Misha, mixed category. Definitely an obvious one from the start, and the personality is not the best either. Morgan. Amazing. One of the most fun and likable winners to have the show, and she's also, she's also now a huge reality star after this season, and she's just around a likable and fun presence from beginning to end. Now we get to the BB Canada winners. The Canada, Canada. Some of these winners are definitely interesting, honestly. First up, we have a Jillian. The funny thing about Jillian is that she actually was going to lose this season, and that's also because that apparently one of the jurors actually mistakenly voted for the wrong person. Like she was meant to vote for the wrong second person uh, in that season, yet yeah, she voted for her, and she won. Because of that. <laughs> so, yeah, she can't play terribly enough. I think there's some points where she just played kind of terribly, but she has some of the boys really enjoy her like, and she's definitely not the most memorable presence in the world, but I've always enjoyed her, so I'm going to put Jillian in the good category. Here we have John Party, a very dominant winner, but a very likable winner. That's so, he's going in the amazing category. Sarah Holden. I wonder, I've always thought to be kind of underrated. I don't think people talk about Sarah nearly enough, honestly. Again, her game wasn't the best in the world, but I think she definitely demonstrated a impressive social game that kind of probably what led her to win in the first place. And while she wasn't a huge in competition, she definitely displayed her competition ability very well, and she was just a fun, likable person. So, I'm putting her in the great category. Nick and Phil. Solid decent. Personality is yeah, definitely a great dominant winner. Again, you know, all instances of Pale Brothers that competed again this season. Yeah, you know, definitely not the most member winners in the world. They'll have the best personalities in the world, but still likable well enough. Then we get to Kevin Martin. Definitely in the base for being one of the best strategic minds ever. Again, someone who basically returned from BB3 to pretty much dominate and try to win this time. And they did it with an amazing fashion. I know when I was so happy to have won, to so happy to have finally seen him actually succeed in winning the game. Definitely one of the most rootable people to ever appear on Big Brother. And one of the most satisfying winners ever. So he definitely belongs in the high goal winner category. Par then we have Paris from Big Brother 6. I'm not a great win, honestly. Yeah, great game, I like real personality. And yeah, sorry. Great winner, likable and fun personality. Not the best game in the world, but she did bring some great social ability. I definitely want to see her play again. Then we get to Dane. Yes, I'm bringing a lot of these winners tonight. I know I'm bringing a lot of these winners tonight. I have a category, but some of these killer winners are pretty good. And Dane, despite the season not being the greatest in the world, Dane is definitely one of the best competitors and one of the best winners and one of the most likable winners to ever appear on Big Brother. On my burning game, great switch ability, great comp ability, and just a like, great presence throughout. Now we got two winners to talk about. I'm sorry for the extra there, but here, but guys, first off, we have Tyken, the winner of BB9. Definitely not what I expected to win at some point, but 
one I'm very happy to win, honestly. Again, fun, fun, fun likable presence throughout. Sorry if I'm not thinking that's some best ghost guy. He definitely, well, well, was football. He definitely was a great presence. Made some great moves that really benefit. I mean, the fact that he was able to finish just not to use the veto and tank just cut him like two veto on himself and Ty just cut him like. Wow, one of the most cover moves ever, but yeah, he's definitely in the amazing category. And now we get to, to the other Kevin, who won the most recent season, people can't attend. Yeah, I know, yes. Like, he's up there with Dan Gieson, he's basically the best person ever win. Again, again, he's the other one, like with Dr. World Kirby, like I mentioned, to won the game without winning any competition. Like he, like he won one veto, but he didn't win any HRHs. He got from his great social ability, his great strategic play, and the fact that his other friends, friends his fun up to pretty much evict his best friend throughout the season, like, one of the most shocking moves in the history of the show, or show upon reality, reason reality TV, period. Like, holy shit. And at that, that Gavin just has so much fun and so likable throughout the season. They just can't help but root for him. Like, from the first minute he's on the screen, you know this guy's going to be an amazing character. And my god, he was now even more amazing than you originally would think. Like, holy shit. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> Wow, but yeah, Kevin, he is just an incredible winner and definitely one of the most, like, one of the best winners to have ever played, Big Brother. Definitely one of the best winners to have ever played, Big Brother. Well, guys, that is my BB winner ranking. This is how I rank every winner. To put in my bottom winner, probably with a you know, total of 37 winners to ever people, Big Brother. And then 37 obviously would be Adam, he's my least favorite, then I'll go with Josh, Eddie, Jackson, then Misha for Slippy B3, and Maggie for B6. And then I'll go Nick and Phil from BB4, and Tamar from Celebrity Bro 2, then Jillian from BB1, Lisa from BB3, Rachel Riley from BB13, Marissa from Celebrity Bro 1, Sarah from BB3, Xavier from BB23, C from BB17, Paris from BBK6, June from BB4, Jordan from BB11, then I go Morgan from Big Brother Over Top. I'm gonna try to add brought that back on, that's probably the end these characters, honestly. John from BB2, Can2, Nicole from BB18, Ian, BB14, Drew, BB5, Tycon from BBK9, Casey from BB20. And of course, we got the 5, 6, 7, 8, to the 12, which I could be the higher echelon of Big Burner winners. Andy from BB Camp, but BB 15, Hayden from BB 12, Evil Dick from BB, sorry, Evil Dick from BB 8, Dane from BB Camp 7, Mike from BB 7, All Stars, Cody Caffiori from BB 22, Will Kirby from BB2, Taylor from BB24, yeah, she says hi, honestly, yeah, she can be both Kirby, Mike Boogie, she's not like, what guys? 4, Derek, 3, Kevin Martin, 2, Dia, Kevin, I don't remember his last name, and, of course, Dan Gilfrey is still the best, though. Well, guys, that is how I would rank every Big Brother winner. I would love to know down in the comment section, how would you guys rank every BB winner? I would definitely love to know down below, and I do plan on eventually doing one, Taylor is where I rank every, like, Big Brother Runner Up, every Big Brother Founder, every Big Brother Merge Boot as well. And I mean, I might, might do some general cast rankings as well. So, stay for that, guys. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I am Sam with one more sessions. And I will see you guys next time. Stay cool, out, buddy. Peace.